This was the 75th anniversary of the Nuremberg Code. It took place in the midst of the COVID pandemic. These past two years and a half have been especially stressful as painful memories were rekindled. In 1941, my family was forced from our home in Romania to Ukraine. We were herded into a concentration camp, essentially left to starve. Death was everywhere. Death was the cloud above us. My father died at the camp of typhus, an infectious disease that was rampant in all the concentration camps and ghettos for lack of any sanitary conditions. In 1944, as the final solution was being aggressively implemented, Romania dislodged from its alliance with Nazi Germany, allowed several hundred orphan Jewish children to return to Romania if they had a relative there. Although I was not an orphan, my mother lied to save my life. I boarded a cattle car train, the very same train that continued to bring Jews to the death camps. The Holocaust did not begin in the gas chambers of Auschwitz or Treblinka. The Holocaust was preceded by nine years of incremental restrictions on personal freedom and the suspension of legal rights, civil rights, and essentially human rights. The stage was set by fear-mongering and hate-mongering propaganda, a series of humiliating, discriminatory government edicts demonized Jews as spreaders of disease. We were compared to lice. The real viral disease that infected Nazi Germany was eugenics. Eugenics is the elitist ideology at the root of all genocides. It was embraced by the academic, the medical establishment, as well as the judiciary, both in Germany and the United States. Eugenicists justify social and economic inequality. They legitimize discrimination, apartheid, sterilization, euthanasia, and genocide. The Nazis called it ethnic cleansing to protect the gene pool. Medicine was perverted from its healing mission and was weaponized. First, it was to control reproduction through forced sterilization, and then it was to eliminate those deemed to be subhuman, untermenschen, the first victims of medical murder were 1,000 German infants and toddlers under the age of three. The murderous operation was expanded to an estimated 10,000 children, German children, under the age of 17. The next victims were the mentally ill, followed by the elderly in nursing homes. All of these human beings were condemned as worthless eaters. Under Operation T4, designated hospitals were turned into killing centers where various extermination methods were tested, including Zyklon B, the gas that was used in the gas chambers. They used exhaust, injections, some of the children were starved to death so that doctors could record how long it takes a child to die when denied nutrition. We're talking about inculcating sadism. The objective of the final solution was the annihilation of the entire European Jewish population, which at the time was 11 million. The Nazis enacted discriminatory laws. They utilized modern technology, low-cost industrial methods, 
an efficient transportation system and a highly trained bureaucracy that coordinated the industrial genocidal process. Hitler had IBM. That was the technology. IBM was the most advanced at the time, and they had punch card system. So it was pretty clumsy compared to the computer today. However, it was the weapon that Hitler needed to identify every Jew and to have all the information about each one so that they could then deport them, they could divest them of all their property. The idea was an industrial, efficient genocide. The purpose of Holocaust memorials is to warn and inform future generations about how an enlightened, civilized society can be transformed into a genocidal universe ruled by absolute moral depravity. If we are to avert another Holocaust, we must identify ominous current parallels before they poison the fabric of society. Since the Nazi era, the study of history and most of the humanities, including philosophy, religion, and ethics, have been overshadowed by an emphasis on utilitarian science and technology. Technology and modernism and convenience have become the end all and be all. They are what's valued. And you really, really have denigrated the idea of what's human, humanitarian, human values, right and wrong. Everything becomes relative. As a result, few people recognize foreboding similarities between current policies and those under the Nazi regime. By declaring a state of emergency in 1933 and 2020, personal freedom, legal rights, and civil rights were swept aside. Repressive, discriminatory decrees followed. In 1933, the primary target of discrimination were Jews. Today, the target is people who refuse to be injected with experimental, genetically engineered so-called vaccines. Stand up to tyranny. Do it. Get it on the front. You know I am right. It started with small things. The Holocaust didn't happen for years. Hitler tested it out. What would happen if he goes the next step and the next step? And as long as people looked the other way, ignored what was happening as they did, he escalated, he upped the ante. And this afternoon, we're announcing new guidelines for every American to follow over the next 15 days. 15 days to stop the spread. 15 days. 15 days. 15 days to slow the spread. In Florida, we did the 15 days to stop the spread. This order is operational for two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. The next two weeks are critical if we're going to be able to do this. A two-week freeze. We just need to do this for a few more weeks. That's what we need to do for a few weeks. 15 days is likely not going to be enough. You don't make the timeline. The virus makes the timeline. Easter is our timeline. What a great timeline that would be. Right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. Wear a mask, get a mask, uh, whether you like the mask or not. Things won't go back to truly normal until we have a vaccine that we've gotten out to basically the entire world. U.S. Army Material Command General Gustave Perna will assist in leading Operation Warp Speed. We will defeat the enemy. Why? Because winning matters. 
I have really good news. Today, our nation has achieved a medical miracle. We have delivered a safe and effective vaccine in just nine months. While Mr. Biden said he would be willing to get a vaccine, he would not require it for all Americans. I don't think it should be mandatory. I wouldn't demand it to be mandatory. As your president, I'm announcing tonight a new plan to require more Americans to be vaccinated to combat those blocking public health. The COVID pandemic is the worst mass violation of the Nuremberg Code ever because it is putting millions of people into an uncontrolled experiment. People have got to understand vaccination is going to be in the end your route to liberty. The people who are not getting vaccines, it's time to start shaming them. What else? Or leave them behind. You either have the jab or you don't go to work, I, I think. If you don't want to get vaccinated, don't think you can get on a plane or a train besides vaccinated people and put them at risk. It's time for to start blaming the unvaccinated folks, not the regular folks. But we can't trust the unvaccinated. We just have to make people understand that, you know, no jab, no life. Don't get the vaccine. You can't go to the supermarket. People who refuse to accept vaccine, I think the right response for them is to insist that they be isolated. Don't have the vaccine, you don't show it, can't go to the ball game. If you're willing to walk among us unvaccinated, you are an enemy. Those who haven't had jabs but could have jabs need to have a badge saying unjabbed. Don't have the vaccine, can't go to work. I don't even think that we should allow people on the streets unless they've had the vaccine. No COVID vaccine, no transplant. I don't want them next to me or anywhere near me or even in the same carriage on the train. So, uh, yeah, they can exercise their freedom by staying at home. If you want to participate in our society fully, you got to get vaccinated. No more shots! No more shots! No more shots! No. We have to stop coddling the morons who will not get the shot. Those people are selfish. They're selfish. Snowflakes. Dangerous. Morally repugnant. Cowards. Irresponsible people. And idiots. And I dare say they're a bit stupid because I can't understand why you would turn down your vaccine and I don't I, think that they should be able I, to lead their lives as normal. Frankly, if, if, you, if you're not vaccinated at the moment, you're not just irresponsible. I mean, you're an idiot. We don't have a vaccine. Can't come here. No shirt, no shoes, no service. That's why I think we should be right now. There needs to be a registry of the people who are unvaccinated. Although that's sounding very... Germany. Vaccines are our way out of this pandemic, our only way out of this pandemic. We are so close. We have this great beacon of hope, but we need to get everybody vaccinated. If you're vaccinated, you're not going to be hospitalized. You're not going to be in an ICU unit and you're not going to die. When people are vaccinated, they can feel safe that they are not going to get infected. Vaccinated people do not carry the virus, don't get sick. You're OK. You're not going to you're not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. You really do not want to be the person who gets it and then spreads it to other people. You are not doing this for yourself. Everyone who takes the vaccine is not just protecting themselves, but reducing their transmission. Uh, to other people and allowing society to get back to normal. They're really, really good against variants. I knew these vaccines were not going to protect against infection, and I think we overplayed the vaccines. Was the Pfizer COVID vaccine tested on stopping the transmission of the virus before it entered the market. Um, regarding the question around, um, did we know about stopping humanization before um, it's entered the market? No. Uh, these, um, you know, we had to really move at the speed of science. Reports from our international colleagues, including Israel, suggest increased risk of severe disease amongst those vaccinated early. The current vaccines are not infection blocking, uh, they're not broad, so when new variants come up, you lose protection. And they have very short duration, uh, particularly in the people who matter, which are old people. 
The CDC is going to be holding an emergency meeting next week to talk about higher than expected cases of heart inflammation in 16 to 24 year olds following doses of Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. Sweden has suspended the Moderna vaccine for those under the age of 30. We really need much better data, I think, before we move forward on this. And I can only hope that it's coming because I feel very strongly about my no vote there. In fact, the only reason I voted no was because hell no was not a choice. This is not an ordinary medicine. This is not part of the medical armamentarium. It's a, a secretive formulation under military secret contract. And what's more, the FDA sought to keep secret for 75 years. A judge overruled them. The FDA is supposed to be our gatekeeper. Instead, it's protecting the pharmaceutical industry. Nobody in Congress is asking to analyze the vials. Nobody in the mainstream media has ever asked what's in the vials. And the public doesn't want to know either because the public's not asking what's in these vaccines. If people understood what was in the vaccine, they'd go apeshit. Uh, the first one is a typical um, package insert that we see with any vaccine. When you open the box, next to the vial, you find a package insert that um, has information about what the product contains. And the other label that I'm going to show you, the other package insert, came from a box of MR mRNA product. So vaccine that was um, brought to the clinic for the purpose of giving that to children. And this should look the same as the other package insert that I showed you. But yet when we open it almost two years into this, we find that it still says intentionally blank. These injections were unleashed under the emergency use authorization. Emergency use authorization is really only legally valid if there's no other treatment currently available. And that is a lie as well. Government decrees today continue to forbid doctors to prescribe life-saving, fully approved FDA medicines. They must follow government dictated protocols and those continue to kill. There are quite a few drugs that have been used for decades for all kinds of other ailments. And the doctors have tested out with COVID patients and they worked. They saved lives. I've interviewed Vladimir Zelenko, who just died recently. He himself saved 7,000 people. He lost three patients, only three. No agency, no public health agency can match that. What they have done actually is forbid doctors from using these drugs. They forbade hospitals. I had seven COVID patients, including a 31-year-old woman. I was not allowed to treat these people. I had to stand by idly. I had to stand by idly watching these people die. What is really, really shocking, it should be shocking to people, is how easily the medical establishment just went along. Uh, uh, I'm a little scared to get the shot because I don't like needles. Uh, will it hurt? I like to bring something from home that might make me feel safe, like a favorite toy maybe. I also take three big breaths and then think about all the fun things I can do after I get the vaccine. Just the fact that there is this single, you know, you're being pushed in line to go to march along just one single way, that in itself should tell you something's wrong. It seems like there was a playbook. 
the playbook was to suppress any hope of treatment, a complete oblivion to treatment through all the entities that we've mentioned, and at the same time prepare the population for mass vaccination. These two are very tightly linked. The country is entering a new phase in the battle against COVID-19. That's how President Biden is painting the rollout of updated booster shots targeting Omicron subvariants, calling it a new vaccine with a new approach. For most Americans, that means one COVID-19 shot once a year each fall. We offer group life and disability insurance to employers. And we are seeing right now the highest death rates we have ever seen in the history of this business. The, the data is consistent across every player uh, in, in, that, in that business. Now, this is primarily um, working age people, 18 to 64. And what we saw just in third quarter, we're seeing it continue into fourth quarter, is that uh, death rates are up 40 percent over what they were pre-pandemic. Now, just to give you a, a, an idea of how bad that is, a three sigma or a one in 200 year uh, catastrophe would be 10% increase. The total excess deaths here is over 20 cent. So I think we are in somewhat of an international um, emergency. Scientists say there has been an increased rise, a sharp rise in unexplained deaths during the pandemic. Deaths that are not listed as COVID related. They're calling it a slow burning background crisis. They're creating a, a whole class of vaccine injured people, sudden adult death syndrome. They have to create syndromes. That's it. You know, that's something that psychiatry does a lot of. But now it's being done with these post injections. The data already shows huge harm for many, many people. It's a turning backward, sliding backward to that Nazi period because without the protection of a moral and legal document, where are we? Taking their places in the famous Nuremberg courtroom, judges of the Allied Military Tribunal begin the trial of minor war criminals. The moral significance of the Nuremberg Code cannot be overstated. The Nuremberg Code is the most authoritative, internationally recognized document in the history of medical ethics. This landmark document was formulated in response to the evidence of medical atrocities committed by Nazi physicians and scientists. The code sets forth moral boundaries of research involving human beings. The human rights apply to every human being, every race, creed, and color. It makes no difference. We are one human family. Like the Ten Commandments, not a word of the Nuremberg Code may be changed. The voluntary consent of the human subject is absolutely essential. Now the duty and responsibility for ascertaining the quality of the consent rests upon each individual who initiates, directs, engages in the experiment. It is their personal responsibility which may not be delegated to another with impunity. Doctors have a responsibility to individual patients. When they negate that, when they follow public health dictates, they are guilty of violating both the Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm, and the Nuremberg Code. Doctors are responsible. And someday doctors will be held accountable again. I mean, at Nuremberg, that was one of the things that was totally unique. Doctors were put on trial for their decisions, their crimes. Military Tribunal 1 has found in the judge you guilty, 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 guilty of war crimes, crimes against humanity. Military Tribunal 1 sentences you 
to death by hanging, and may God have mercy upon your soul. In 1979, a report to the President of the United States by the U.S. Commission on the Holocaust, chaired by Auschwitz survivor Elie Wiesel, warned, the inclination to duplicate the Nazi option and once again exterminate millions of people remains a hideous threat. Those who declare that Holocaust analogies are off limits are betraying the victims of the Holocaust by denying the relevance of the Holocaust. From the White House in the office of the President of the United States, we present an address by Dwight D. Eisenhower. In 1961, in his farewell address to the nation, President Dwight D. Eisenhower warned against the increasing domination of the military-industrial complex, whose total influence, economic, political, even spiritual, he said, is felt everywhere akin to and largely responsible for the sweeping changes in our industrial military posture has been the technological revolution during recent decades. In this revolution, research has become central. It also becomes more formalized, complex, and costly. A steadily increasing share is conducted for, by, or at the direction of the federal government. The prospect of domination of the nation's scholars by federal employment, project allocations, and the power of money is ever present and is gravely to be regarded. Yet in holding scientific research and discovery in respect, as we should, we must also be alert to the equal and opposite danger that public policy itself could become the captive of a scientific technological elite. He didn't include there specifically the medical establishment and public health, but he recognized that it was this military technology that was pushing everything. It was pushing the economy and it was pushing the culture. And this is exactly what happened in Nazi Germany and what's happening now. Humanity is currently under siege by the global heirs to the Nazis. In May 2022, at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Klaus Schwab, the architect of the dystopian Great Reset, declared, and I quote him, let's be clear, the future is not just happening, the future is built by us, a powerful community here in this room. We have the means to impose the state of the world. It is clear that the COVID-19 crisis is a watershed moment for digital infrastructure and services. Digital is the fabric of our post-COVID lives and we will continue to rely on technology more and more. I recommend highly that one reads Johnny Bedmore's uh, report, Schwab Family Values. I don't quite think that he would be the poster boy that you would entrust your life to, to the Great Reset. The ultimate goal of these megalomaniacs is to gain total control of the natural resources, the financial resources, and to replace humans with transhuman robots. We're going to start the when humans become cyborg session. You know, I, I always want to be a cyborg. I'm waiting for the day. Transhumanism is a biotech enhanced caste system. The new eugenics. Transhumanists and, you know, globalists they really think that they can manipulate the entire universe and have it run the way they dream up. This is absurd. They don't have that, actually, they do not have the technology that they pretend that they do. Because they're testing everything out on us. They're getting a free ride. The whole human species is that, you know, is their toys. 
They're treating us like toys. Klaus Schwab's lead advisor is Yuval Noah Harari. In the coming decades, AI and biotechnology will give us godlike abilities to re-engineer life and even to create completely new life forms. After four billion years of organic life shaped by natural selection, we are about to enter a new era of inorganic life shaped by intelligent design. Our intelligent design. Harari is a proponent of the new eugenics and transhumanism. Harari refers to humans as hackable animals. He declared we have the technology to hack humans on a massive scale. Harari declares that there are too many useless people. Remember the Nazi term was worthless eaters. This is the new eugenics. It is embraced by the most powerful global billionaire technocrats who gather in Davos. Big tech, big pharma, the financial oligarchs, academics, government leaders, and the military industrial complex. These megalomaniacs have paved the road to another Holocaust. I was well aware of the um, role of uh, Tedros Adhanom in crimes against humanity committed by the uh, Ethiopian government. The world's most important public health agency is being run by a man who um, is obviously amoral. I believe the time is right for an international treaty or other legally binding instrument to provide the framework for a more coherent and coordinated response to future epidemics. Member states have agreed to a timeline which could lead to a legally binding treaty. That means there's laws. The more power is moved away from local, individual, community, national to global, the less power you will have, the less power I will have. We see an increase in censorship, regulation against protest, control of communication. You see what new tyranny looks like. There will be no rescuers which means the responsibility is ours to rescue ourselves, to prevent a Holocaust. It's that serious. Unless all of us resist, never again is now.